In this video I'm just going to fix a few problems that I found and add a little bit more detail. I'm going to start with the hinge piece. looks like it should be a good bit wider um, than I actually gave it. So I'll just grab this. Make sure reflection's turned on, then I'll just speed this whole operation up. Um, something like that looks a little better. Again, reflection's still on. So I could actually snap this um, out to there and then just push it back in to, to give me whatever sort of gap I feel like um, works best here. So maybe something like that looks good. And then back here, I noticed some problems when I'm looking at the reference as well. Uh, so get ahead here. Uh, so here, see how it cuts into those little ear pieces, and I've got that flat, and then it goes all the way down. <clears throat> so go ahead and start with just this piece. And what I'm going to want to do is uh, add a new edge loop across here, and then just delete out a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna grab these guys and turn off that. Make sure I got a good selection going there. I do want that to grab this face as well. And this one, I did some pretty bad selection there. Okay, so this is going to be easiest from the front. Typically when you use cut faces, you want to do it from an orthographic view, otherwise you can end up with cuts that go through in very odd ways. So something like that is probably going to work fine. Just grab that edge loop and snap that up. Now I'm going to need to create some cuts on these faces here so that I can drop these pieces out and then and then add them back in. So again, back to the front, um, back to the Cut Faces tool. I'll just sort of put those in wherever they go. Holding Shift allows that to snap perfectly vertically. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and snap these out to a place. If I could actually grab the right manipulator. There we go. Uh, that guy and then uh, I'll just match it on this side, that way I have the symmetry. The reason I'm not doing this only to half is I'm a little bit concerned that, that things won't line up exactly um, exactly right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete the, these faces, um, that sort of edge loop selection to, or face loop selection doesn't seem to be working, so there we go, something like that. Okay. So get rid of those guys, that looks good. That one too. Okay, so we'll go ahead and append these back into place now. And just to demonstrate the append tool a little bit, if you do your appending in a counterclockwise direction like this, you can keep going uh, as many as you want. And there is a limitation in the options that you have to set up. Um, right here it says, um, limit the number of points, you can have that turned on and have it limited to quad. But if you want to add a bunch, you need to go counterclockwise. If you try to go clockwise, here I'll just do it up here on this piece. So I'll just try to go clockwise here. And notice that it won't continue to add. So I'll just press backspace until I get back to the beginning of that. And now I'll go counterclockwise. Whoops. Uh, bad click there, that wasn't actually a, a problem. So notice now that that all goes in just fine. So I'm not sure why that's the case, but if you just go counterclockwise, uh, a pen will uh, be a good pal. Of course, in this case, if you have a closed edge loop like that for border edges, you can just use fill hole, and that's probably more efficient anyways. Okay, so I'll just soften and harden that. That should clean that piece up. I do have a, a little issue right here. Again, Sometimes this this kind of thing can just happen if if you look at your verts and you only have a single vert like this one needs to be uh, merged. That's actually what the problem is in this case. But sometimes uh, you end up needing to delete a face and add it back in. In that case, I just had a an extra vert that wasn't merged. All right, so that piece looks good. So deselect and shift I. I'm going to fix this piece. So shift I here. And okay, this piece. I think I just plain straight up modeled this thing wrong. So let me just go ahead and, uh, and fix this while we're back here. So I'm going to delete out all the extra faces that I think don't need to be here. Um, probably those guys need to go. Um, these guys need to go. Okay, and then basically all of these need to go too. So what this thing should actually do is come out and be a flat face up here. Uh, that just makes more sense. So this will allow me also to um, try to demonstrate bridge. We'll see if this uh, this is happy. 
So I'll go ahead and do bridge on that. Work fine. I just have um, some settings on my bridge to divide. So I don't want that. So that worked well. This can happen um, with bridge. Um, this is another one of those situations where you can just go ahead and do an append to poly on that and it should probably just fix it. So any edge to any edge. So see that border edge is gone. So that worked fine. Uh, up here I'll have a little bit of an issue. I'll need to tie in uh, these pieces here. Um, let me go ahead and snap this and I'll go ahead and just turn on reflection so hopefully it'll grab the other side at the same time. Uh, look like that worked fine. So I'll go ahead and merge those in and now I'll just need to do um, actually this is probably going to be easier just to do as an append uh, just be faster than doing the split so I'll just do an append here and that one does need to be a triangle and this one needs to be a triangle uh, just to, because it's got depth that starts right there basically so just like that okay so that's what that part should actually look like uh, now to go ahead and size it up to match what we just did and make sure I turn off reflection on this yeah so that looks that looks fine actually I just wanted to make sure that depth didn't end up creating a, a little bit of a weirdness um, that looks fine so I'll go ahead and scale this out now and everything should come along for the ride just fine okay everything looks good so um, in fact I think probably these faces here should probably come too and now I can't press shift I or else I'll just see this stuff I don't want that so I just want to come in here and just turn that off manually like that and of course you can set up a different um, shortcut for turning on and turning off the isolate selection but I don't have that problem too often so I just leave it just as the shift I okay just leave that gap like usual and then extrude these guys again I don't want to just pull that down because I'll end up creating a little bit of different angle so I'll go ahead and pull that down and it looks like just out just a just a little bit to fit what was there Okay, double check uh, that that guy's not a problem. Okay, that's looking uh, much better, much more like what the image uh, actually looks like in the in the video reference. Okay, looks good. Shift I again. Okay, so let's go ahead and tie in uh, these little rail pieces, these pieces right here, and they do stick out um, quite a bit. You can see them here in profile, so they stick out a, a fair amount there. So I'll go ahead and, and add that. These are going to be pretty simple. I'm not going to worry about um, adding too much detail to these. These are pretty small little little things. So I'll just snap this up here. Okay. I guess I'll go ahead and get that size basically from this side here. We do have some perspective in in this, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna set this up a little bit because it looks like I can see a little bit of an a lip here. So I think this is probably supposed to be inside um, this other piece, uh, like it's sort of just welded on or something. I'm not sure what purpose this this piece is supposed to play, but um, add it all the same. All right, get rid of that face since that's going to be inside this. Let me start just making this thing happen here. That might be a little bit thin, maybe something more like that. Okay, and again I've got the side reference that's really good to show me exactly where this thing starts and stops. And I think maybe it looks like, it's hard to tell in this reference, but maybe this has a little bit of a rounding on this end. Uh, it's a little difficult to tell, the reference isn't that high quality. Um, but something like that and it looks like we're gonna have another piece that just drops over the top of that like another little tab piece um, let's go ahead and round this in uh, like I said I can't tell if it's absolutely supposed to be but we'll go ahead and do it anyways um, that's probably fine actually that's maybe I could add one more division just to smooth it out just a hair and then might as well increase the offset while I'm doing this just to round it a little bit further Okay, so maybe something like that will be all right. And these two guys just look a little funny to me, so I'm going to go ahead and pull them back. Uh, just change the angle just slightly. Maybe just scale them down a little bit too. Okay, 
So I think what it is is um, this overall offset here ended up flattening or giving me a really small face at the end and I want those to be pretty evenly distributed in order for that to look like a good round piece. So just get rid of these guys. Now this will actually create a little bit of a problem on the inside where I had already deleted the face. So let me just show you that. Whenever you do a, a bevel like that, you end up creating these little um, edge pieces. And I still don't like that angle, so I'm going to go back to the side. Turn off Isolate Select again. Okay, so I think I just overdid it before just flattening that thing out. Okay, so that looks that looks pretty good. Now to create the inside face, I'm not sure that this actually needs to be rounded on the inside, but um, I think it'll probably look fine. It's not that heavy geometry-wise. So I'll just go ahead and do an extrude on this and just pull that down to whatever size it looks like it's supposed to be. So just using the extrude in this case to inset, and then I'm going to go ahead and move that up so I don't have to change uh, the profile of that curve and then basically just grab these ones and just push them down this end. Um, and then we'll grab that face, extrude it again, and just push that face in. Man, this is, uh, Miss Mouse is giving me a hard time. All right. Okay, like that, and then we'll go ahead and just delete that out. Again, that's going to be inside anyway, so that won't cause any problem. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I've got the little rail piece. Now, uh, go ahead and let me just add this one little end cap, and that'll be done. So, won't need that guy. I could, I could just go ahead and extrude from that. It's it's really not a big deal either way. But um, let me just do an extrusion here. Maybe something like that's okay. And then you know, just go ahead and extrude that again. I could just do that as a separate object, um, but this is it's probably going to be fine. Not really adding much. Okay, uh, and then double check the inside because I think we should probably have a bit of a issue here. We end up creating these uh, inside faces. This, this one here may actually be needed. Um, no, it doesn't look like it will be, actually. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And then these edges here will just snap out to be in line with this. Not that that really matters. You're never going to see that, but might as well just clean it up a little bit. So that looks pretty good. Looks like the whole thing could potentially just move up a little bit um, just to put that whole tab on there. Again, I'm not sure exactly how that thing's supposed to look. The reference is a little bit low quality in that area, but I think that's going to be fine. All right. so. Now this is one piece. I should have done this before I did the mirror, but I didn't, so that's fine. So I'll just show you a couple different ways you could approach when you need to mirror something around like this. One way is, if you want to maintain your transform, is just go ahead and do the duplicate, and then just reverse whatever you've got going on here. So I've got negative 1.3, so I'll just do that, and then negative on scale, um, except not 10, <laughs> uh, minus, um, and that thing should be an exact duplicate. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it might be if you select the object and you don't care about the transform, just freeze the transformation. And basically what that does is it, it will bake all of this transformation, like the scale and where the, um, the object has been transformed um, or, or translated on the transform level. And it will actually just sort of bake that into the verts. So now you can see that all goes back to zeros and ones. And then I want this thing to duplicate across the center axis. So one way to do that from here is just reset transformations. Um, that'll put that back at the origin. And now if I duplicate this and go negative scale here, that'll just flip around to that side. Because it's just basically mirroring uh, and it mirrors across the, the center axis. So something like that works fine. In this case, I'll go ahead and combine these because they should have all been one unit anyways. Something like that. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, I think I need to add a couple things here. So I'll just go ahead and do that really quickly. So I'm going to isolate select this just to demonstrate one other thing. And if I go ahead and create a NURB cylinder, and in this case, I'm going to try to match that resolution, which was 24. So I've already got it. Click Create, and where's my cylinder? It's not here. So isolate select has a thing that says um, auto load um, new 
objects. So if you turn that guy on and then you add something, it'll automatically get added in. If you add something and you didn't have that turned on, you can just say add selected and that'll get added in. So that's something that can definitely uh, get in the way sometimes. Okay, so I'll just do this from the front. In this case, um, I'm just going to go ahead and snap this up to right where it's supposed to be. So just V there and snap to that point and that'll get me exactly centered and then scale that up to basically match what that looks like. That looks good. I think being a tiny bit bigger is, is fine with me. Um, go ahead and put this um, back where it's supposed to be. Okay, and just do this from the side again. And I'm going to go ahead and kill those cap divisions. Don't need any cap divisions on that. I'll just grab these, push them back. Want it to be close, but not not touching in this case. Now at the back of this piece, we probably do want it to go ahead and touch. So I'll leave a gap there, and then pull these ones uh, over to. That's pretty close to where it's supposed to be already. Maybe it should be just a little bit forward. Um, it looks like maybe that's why I left this little gap thing. So I'll just go ahead and snap that there, and then I'm going to grab this face and just extrude that. This would be easiest from the side again. In this case, I do want this one to go ahead and snap directly to that. Um, and it's because this is supposed to be one piece, so I don't want to have any gap there. And then I'll just go ahead and scale that down and match this sort of angle that already exists here. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry about this mouse. I just can't get used to the extra button. It's also a different orientation. Got one of these vertical mice to try to get rid of some arm pain. And uh, I guess it's kind of working, but it's, God, it's made me slow. Okay, so let me go ahead and, uh, and harden that just to make that feel like more of a facet. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, I think that's probably pretty close to what it's supposed to look like. And just double check from the side here that that's looking good. It is. Um, there's a little bit of something happening in here. See this little tab that's hanging down? I wonder if that's supposed to be um, part of this piece here. Because I've got sort of a big gap happening right there. So maybe these pieces here were supposed to just extrude down a little bit and I uh, missed that, that clue until now. So maybe something like that. And then since I have a little bit of an inner penetration, I didn't really see this, but um, I'll go ahead and add this just because it'll, it'll look a little better. I'll just go ahead and bevel that edge, something like that. And that way that'll look like probably it'll fit that angle. That's pretty close to what the angle is there. And I'll just try to match that angle a little bit better, something like that, just to make it feel like it's supposed to be there. I mean, look at what I just did to my mesh. I think that looks fine. Um, I have now a span that's not doing anything. Uh, actually that span right there isn't doing anything for my form so I can go ahead and delete that. And this span here, um, I do need, do want those outside edges, but that three span right there, that's not doing anything so just get rid of that too. And just cleaning this thing up and try to make it a little bit lower poly. That one's fine. Um, the rest of those guys look fine to me. So, Okay, so this is where we are now. That's looking looking pretty good. I'm going to do another video of these details up here and then of the hammer and we'll be pretty close to done on this thing.